I like to call prolific content planning because um, after the first maybe year or maybe it was just six months of uh, establishing this new site that I had at the time, this is, you know, two, three years ago now, this Biorgina.com site, I had people emailing me and asking, like, how do you produce so much content? You have this many eBooks, you're, you know, doing this, that, and the other online, and you have this many blog posts, like, how is that possible? And I was thinking, like, this is so weird that I'm getting this question from so many people. Is it really like a lot of content? And so I started looking around at, at other blogs and, and podcasts and all of this stuff. And I was like, okay, I guess it is. And so I've been trying to package what it is I do in the planning process I go through because I don't have more time in a day than anyone else does. But I think that if we can be smart about the way we approach plant product planning, um, it's going to influence how much content we can put out. And, and basically also just one quick note, I think we have to change the way. So a lot of us who are entrepreneurs did a, a originally come from the corporate world. And I think a lot of times we try to make these corporate work methods apply to what we're doing now, which is just a much more creative, different space. We haven't been selling information and coaching services on the web for 80 years. We've been doing it only for a few years. And so you can't apply this, this corporate mindset and TPS reports, if anyone's familiar with, the, with that um, office space movie, you can't apply all of that concept to your work. So we start to just feel bad when we're not as productive as we could be or when we don't get as much done as we used to uh, when we were working at regular jobs. And then that can just kind of spiral us into this like not as productive state. So long answer to your question, prolific content planning, and it's all about planning your products and then breaking them down in such a way that you're creating your product and the content that's going to promote your product at the same time. And you can create a lot more. All right, this is really interesting. So uh, there is a method to your content and there is a specific goal with your content. So it's not just about um, putting out specific, it, it, like random topics. This is all focused around an end goal of promoting and, and selling a product. Right, like because to the outside world and to your audience specifically, you're only as productive or impressive as your last month or so of content. And what I mean by that is there are just so many outlets and voices in the online space that people can tune into that if you just fall off the map or you don't have really epic content, people are going to get that same feeling as when they find a new show on Netflix that looks good and they're like, oh, snap, I'm about to get into this. And then they see it only has one season and you're like, oh, did it get canceled? Like, I don't want to invest my limited time in something that's not going to be a, a long running thing. So if, I don't know if that analogy kind of makes sense. And so basically, yeah, it's about teaching people how to create the most consistent, most quality content they can. And I typically think that that's just about starting from what products do you want to release? And so if you're asking kind of like, what's the goal of this, of this style of content planning? It's, again, to create products at the same time as you're creating the content that will promote those products.